like adapt not adapt but they gravitate to a particular area of our culture and they're like okay well look let me let me monetize this because like because the thing is a lot of black people we just having fun in our culture it's right just fun. we don't also, even we- realize how to monetize our stuff because typically what happens is you create this art and then you hand it over to somebody else to help make it make money you exactly. know and that's been the, that's been the problem so when you don't understand that part you always end up getting screwed welcome to the tmf podcast where we have too many feelings I'm your host, T. Staples, and I'm joined by Miss Monroe and your main man, it's your main man, Freddie B. You already know what it is. Today, we're going to talk about something that's on all our hearts. No matter what background you're from ethnically, we hope you feel us because we have too many feelings about this subject. But first, it's time for a segment I like to call The Internet Never Lost. Never lost. Never lost. That's right. This is my attempt to navigate through the endless insanity of the interconnectivity that brings us together and gives us shareable moments. Like when our favorite celebrities go viral for unintended reasons. But today I'm going to present a few clips from a couple of the not so favorited celebrities. More along the lines of the ones with cult followings and sometimes have rash or harsh rhetoric. With that in mind, here's the scenario. DJ Vlad. He's a Russian and Jewish YouTuber. He has a show that many of our black celebrities frequent and often they lay down their full and current past life stories. But why? Why do they do this? Is it for promotion or does it help them in any significant way? Two celebrities that you may or may not like or know of had something to say about it. One such celebrity named Dash went on to say this. Dudes like Vlad TV and Adam 22. They want to say that I'm disrespectful or humble me because I question why they're even speaking on my culture. I'm difficult. I'm on a blacklist for even speaking of they bum ass blackball list. I'm not never one. That's the type of shit I don't like, man. This narrative they try to create. Oh, a motherfucker's disruptive and disrespectful if he is aware of his self worth and and demands respect for his culture. That's crazy. That's crazy. And that's what it's been that's what it's been with me the whole time. Oh, he's a black man that speaks up for himself? He's crazy. There's a black man that don't let white people rob him or talk to him any old kind of way? I'm nuts. Come on, man, y'all nuts. Balls. Man, we gotta start speaking. We gotta start doing things that are intelligent. That's how we win. Stop looking the other way just for a buck. You know, everybody turns the blind eye because they say they got to eat. That food is not good. That's not good food. That's the food that kills you quick. But how we know the tricks and we still do it? I don't know, Dane. Well, let's hear what Corey Holcomb had to say why you smoked that blunt. Vlad tried to get me to go on his show. I didn't know who the fuck he was. So when my people was like, yo, they want you to come do this show, woo, woo, woo. I mean, I'm just not like the regular nigga. I was like, well, who the fuck show is it? And they like, oh, it's this dude. I'm like, is it major industry production? They like, no, it's in a fucking little ass spot in Van Nuys. I'm like, so it's shit like mine, right? So I said, I got in touch with Vlad. And I'm like, well, shit, come do my show. Or I'll do yours. He ain't want to do my show. So you know what the fuck that mean. I ain't finna do yours. If you go on Vlad's show, you need to get a percentage of that motherfucking video you doing. You can't, all you got is your likelihood right now. Hollywood is shut the fuck down. Mm-hmm. If you go on this motherfucker show, you tell this motherfucker we gonna do the paperwork where I get a percentage of what is made off this video or you gonna pay me to go on your show. He done made enough free money off niggas. Why is everybody going on this show? I don't know, you keep calling him a motherfucker, he may not give you no money. But what else you got to say, Corey? We mentally fucked because we rich. all made this motherfucker. Rich what fuck. even, he ain't got no major, ho- look, if you go on the Tonight Show, if you go on some shit that's major media for free, we know why you did it. Mm-hmm. Y'all made Vlad major media by going on his show for nothing. And he getting the money from all the videos. What are you getting? If you go on Vlad's show for free, you ain't doing nothing but making this motherfucker rich. And if you ain't coming on other people's shows, doing they shit for free, or you acting funny with niggas with shows, you fucking up. That shit dad said is for real. 
Motherfucker, tax this motherfucker. We can't just be going on Vlad for free, man. The fuck? Is Vlad TV helping our black celebrities come up or is he simply a cultural vulture? Send us a message. Our handles are in the description and let us know how you feel. This has been yours truly, T. Staples, in this week's edition of The Internet Never Lost. Never lost. Never lost. Never lost. Catch you next time. And now into our topic of the hour. What is it that we need to do in America today to help the black economic condition? And how did we get here? So I'm going to start off right now by talking about a situation where we have two gentlemen, Joe Button, Charlemagne the God, who have recently come into some dealings with each other in the media. And they're talking about economics and, and deals that they're making with their various uh, uh, contracts or, or should I say entities in which they have gone about figuring out how to make money differently and they're fighting there's some infighting about if what one is doing is better than the other and where we are today but in order to really get us into this topic i want to i want to shoot over to freddie b because we need some background on what's going on with the black economic situation in america today so freddie b help us out bring us up to speed in, in a nutshell is Charlemagne. you know he he does a podcast joe Budden does a podcast and Charlemagne works for iheart radio doing his radio show he just did a partnership with uh with uh iheart uh the black effect that'll be uh that'll be done i think i think it's done under iheart right in that in that done mm-hmm. under iheart yeah yeah so it's done under under iheart and um joe budden just he just finished up his deal with spotify and um basically they they had a uh a, a, you know situation where they don't see eye to eye as far as ownership like joe's really pushing ownership he initially did the deal with spotify to as he said, uh, glean information, understand the numbers, how the numbers work, so on and so forth. And then uh, what he was saying to Charlemagne is that basically like the black effect that he's doing under iHeart that he, I'm assuming he's saying that he could have done it just on his own, just had his own network called the black effect and just got everybody and just did it all on his own. I mean, but but basically black people doing their own thing and owning their own stuff and keeping it in the culture. Mm. That's that's interesting, Miss Monroe. Can you can you give me any other insight? What's what's going on with these two guys? I kind of see it as our generation's Martin versus Malcolm um, argument about how to go about it. So to me, Charlemagne seems to be more on Martin Luther King's side, where he prefers to kind of build partnerships and kind of go walk within the parameters that white people kind of already set. It's the same way that Martin Luther King used to do it because you know he had kind of formed a relationship with President Johnson, right? Yeah, Lyndon. Lyndon Johnson, yeah, who signed the, uh, what was it, the 1964 Civil Rights Act? Yeah. So it was kind of like that thing when, you know, Malcolm X was, you know, in a different way. He was like, you know, nah, y'all not going to be beating on us <laughs> in order to to make progress. We feel like we can make progress without having to make y'all comfortable at the same time. Just to appeal to white people's emotions to get them to want to vote for us to have rights. And Malcolm X was like, nah, I'm not about that. And I see kind of, to me, Joe Button is on the, the Malcolm X side, like, I'm not tap dancing for these white people to make them comfortable. You're going to pay me what I'm worth mm. and you're going to respect me and what I've done. And, and I, I see his argument because with Spotify, he basically did help break Spotify. That's interesting. So before Joe Button, Spotify was in need of that lead person to kind of get him out of the rut of ambiguity of just any old other app. Yes. So Spotify comes and they're trying to be the next uh, music, you know, distribution platform but they weren't making any money because the labels are basically you know labels are hogging it all over from every aspect and so they decided to shift to podcasts because they can see more money from that because if i can make money from a three minute song how much money can i make from a three-hour podcast in mm, Joe's mm. uh, on Joe's show, he talks about how they, you know, reached out to him. And one of the, the biggest the biggest person who was supposed to be helping to really break Spotify was supposed to be Amy Schumer. Well, apparently her podcast didn't do very well. And mm. so Joe's ended up being the biggest one. And so from Joe's perspective, what he's saying is y'all wouldn't have been able to go out here and get all these other bigger um basically groups of podcasts because they bought out uh gimlet um which was like you know they uh, it was like a podcast network you know they wouldn't have been able to do that without joe being there first Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i guess the question then is what is Charlemagne's argument really to the whole scenario because if 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 joe was saying listen I, i i was the leader i was a pioneer 
in the landscape of bringing Spotify to the forefront, economically, it seems that he should benefit from that. And if he's not going to benefit from that, he should he should emancipate himself away from that situation. To me, the whole Charlemagne Joe Button thing, to give my honest opinion, I'm more on business wise. I'm more on the Malcolm X side, Joe Button side, where I think that we should stop taking these crumbs from people all the time. The, the thing that got me was. Charlemagne got the whole thing started. <laughs> like, what did he do? What did he do? He unnecessarily kind of attacked. He kind of basically Terry Crews them. So when Wait a uh, minute, like Terry Crews and uh, Tyra Banks, Terry Crews and Gabrielle Union. Oh, Gab- oh, Gabrielle Union. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. What the hell? <laughs> he kind of threw him under the bus unnecessarily. Dang. So Joe Budden goes on his on his show on his podcast and announces to his audience that you know they will not be continuing on with Spotify and he you know basically gives an overview of you know why he went to Spotify which is mostly for data he said it wasn't really about money he was really trying to understand and learn because he comes from the music world so he he streaming and all that is still so very very new and there's still so many um, areas that they're building up and one thing that's definitely not set in stone like the music world is as far as copyrights going licensing goes is the podcast has not reached that point yet there's still you know plenty of area to blaze new trails so for mm-hmm. him he was like okay cool they've agreed to give me this this data that i asked for because he also talks about how he went to title and asked jay-z and jay-z was like no nah, i ain't gonna give you that and spotify mm-hmm. said they would but they didn't so he's explaining that on the show and all the stuff that they've been through while they're there when angela angela Yee does the rumor report Charlemagne, in my opinion kind of throws him under the bus because he was like well it sound like you don't know what you're doing and kind of like you know dissing him a little bit when it was like you know you didn't right. really have to come at him that right. way especially because i'm quite sure because you know Charlemagne, not too long after that announces his deal with heart um i heart and you know him having the black effect uh network podcast network which is I'm not sure. something he owns but it's in conjunction with right well he, is, yeah he owns 50 percent of it is what okay, he said okay he owns 50 percent of it but my thing is if you just did this deal and that, he didn't announce the deal yet so the deal was still you know underway i feel like i'm pretty sure y'all niggas you know these niggas got each other's phone number like you could have called him mm-hmm, <laughs> instead mm-hmm. of being like on your show like yeah you don't know what the fuck you doing nigga like that's kind of what got the whole thing started right 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 <laughs> and and and, and this, what's crazy is these are two black men these are black and this is infighting and we're in a time where we all need to come up on money. Like we we all need to not and not just the money for the sake of the dollars or the cash, but the opportunities as well as the financial literacy to know what to do with the money once we get it to invest it back into things and or to do bigger things. And I think this conversation that's looming around the two gentlemen is really confusing a lot of people because people want to know, I mean, should I should I be employed or should I try to own something? Right. And Charlemagne <laughs> is uh, is is kind of almost on the employed side because mm-hmm. he's relying upon the, the dollars from iHeart to support and back what he's doing, and where Joe Button is like I'm on the ownership side, like this is my entity, and I want to dictate what it is we do and what's put on it advertising wise because of the numbers that we are pulling in, we have the ability to do so, and I st- and I have the control over this so that I don't have to creatively subjugate myself to whatever it is iHeart or Spotify in this case wants me to do so question I have for you both then which is better for black American economics ownership or employment I I would say I would say obviously ownership ownership is always going to be better obviously everybody can't be owners because then you don't have employees but I think the main thing is is feeding into our culture feeding into the ecosystem you know just like Jewish people do just like, you know, any other ethnic group does, you know, black people can do the same thing and then that'll build us up even more. Um, I think the the main thing is, you know, it's, it's, it's being able to own your creative ideas and trust in the process, as they say. Um, I think between the two, Budden and Charlemagne, see, the, th- the thing with Charlemagne is if, if you remember Charlemagne was, if people know, Charlamagne was on the radio in South Carolina. Then he got with Wendy Williams. Then he's on the radio in Philly. He was on the radio in Philly, and he was he was booming and bunking in Philly. And and a lot of people don't a lot of people don't know or maybe forgot that when Beanie Siegel was beefing with Jay Z, Charlamagne was more of a, like a shock jock. Then he's kind of toned it down, but he had put Beanie on the radio in Philly because Beanie is from Beanie Siegel from Philly, and and he played like this uh, this unauthorized diss track. From Beans against Jay. Jay was having his energy, you know, had the juice in the game. And so, you know, it's not really said, but I think, you know, I think 
that Charlemagne got he got essentially white ball from radio to where he ain't had no job. He was gone. And mm-hmm. cause Jay Z mm-hmm. uses juice to pull the plug. And so mm-hmm. Charlemagne is that, didn't is, have to, is that where they get the joke Charlemagne got fired by Jay Z? Oh yeah. So yeah, that's 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 that's, that's where it comes from because I mean I mean it literally if you if you ask Charlemagne told the story, the week that he played it, that later that week he got the call like, hey, it's a rap. So and I can understand I can understand why Charlemagne talked the way he talked. It's like he done been out on his ass, so he's scared. He don't want to go back. He don't want to be broke no more. He got a wife. He got daughters. He trying to do what he can do. But the thing is that I think Joe Joe sees more in Charlemagne than Charlemagne sees in himself. You know, I but agree. Charla- but Charlemagne gonna have to he gonna have to risk it. He gonna have to stick. He gonna have to jump out there. You know, but I, I think I think it's very plausible for Charlemagne just to start the black effect and hit up all the people he got. He could have did it all on his own. And then and then and then Joe and then Joe fumbling the you know I mean not fumbling but Joe leaving Spotify. Joe come to the black effect. Boom. Get with Diddy. He already, he already got a relationship with Revolt. They both got relationships with Diddy at Revolt, and they both got situations at Revolt. They could have got and then did it all together. Diddy, Charlemagne, Joe, boom. We got our own podcast thing. Black people, come up, come, come, come rock with us. Mm. You wanna do a podcast, you gonna boom, boom with us? Get every all the big podcasters, Kid Fury, all the other big ones out there. Us, you know, let's just do it big. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Miss Monroe, ownership or employment? Um, I lean more towards the side of ownership. But there are some situations where you have to do um, not necessarily employment all the time, but maybe partnership. Um, Okay, break that down. They talked about that, too, on The Brilliant Idiots, um, where he just used different examples of, you know, Diddy and Ciroc, Rihanna and Fenty. You know, those are partnerships with other companies, you know, with them having to own all the supply for that. But, you know, if you don't know how to negotiate well, that's that's the thing that they didn't say, because he was kind of say that in, in a sense to kind of like diss Joe and say, well, I'm, I'm in a partnership. But, you know, you can you can be in a partnership and not be in a good partnership. You know, Mm -hmm. he also talked about um, distribution. Well, excuse me, not distribution, licensing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying you could be in a licensing. So uh, I thought it was interesting that Joe had posted a picture of Prince, the picture where he has slave written on the side of his face when he's basically (laughs) talking about, you know, his his master still being owned by the record label and him not being able to do certain things and him not making certain certain amount of money from that and profiting in the way that they are. And uh uh, Charlemagne also talks about too um, what did he say oh he was saying that nobody's ever really gonna pay you what you're worth and so I was like okay so then you do understand what Joe's saying it because <laughs> Joe feels like he's not getting what he's worth you know either you're gonna accept it or not and like you know Fred said earlier I, I agree with that I think that he does not see his worth I think Joe thinks sees hit, sees Charlemagne's worth more than, than Charlemagne does and the fact that he's just willing to accept that because it's like, well, I won't be out on my ass. But he says that he studied Robert Smith and Jay-Z. And I'm like, OK, well, then I don't know about Robert Smith. I haven't studied Robert Smith very much, the billionaire. Um, but Jay-Z, I know, talks about a lot how he took a lot of he took a lot of great risk. And so then employment is the only other option. You know, when you're not willing to take risk is that you're going to have to be employed because that is why the owners get to take what they take because they take the initial risk. You, you know, and I agree with you. I agree actually with both of you, but and I can make an argument for actually for both cases of right. or, or employment because there's some people in school who did really, really well in school and they did really, really well. But school was designed to to prepare you for employment. It wasn't preparing mm-hmm. you for ownership. Right. And so a lot of people who do really, really well in school, you know what else they do well at? Working for people. Right. And they do great at that. And, and then people love them. So I, I, I could I could actually argue both sides. And. I think that we need to get into a position where we have opportunities, not just the ownership or the employment, but the opportunities for both. And I think that's one of the things that is really going to help us, you know, further our economics as black Americans. And when it comes to these two brothers, I actually think that the fighting that they're doing, even though it may seem like in fighting, I think it's a necessary evil because Mm -hmm. if they weren't talking about it, would we be talking about it? And that's the question I always ask. And so, with that, with that being said, one of the things that I think we should also do is kind of like what the Internet Never Lost segment talked about with Dame Dash is we got to start speaking. We got to mm-hmm. start speaking on stuff. Yeah. And, and we can't be afraid to speak on stuff. And it's interesting that you, you brought up the Michael Jackson and Prince because I believe somebody just described their situation very similar to that. And that whereas Prince was stuck underneath a label situation, Michael Jackson got into a position where he started owning masters. And then he bought the Beatles masters. And he understood the, the power of having the ownership of, of, of masters. 
Right. And I think that goes back to even what Kanye West just recently was talking about uh, uh, in the media where he was talking about, you know, not well, owning his Twitter. masters on Twitter. Yeah, he was going on his rant. So I think that people have to realize is that there's some value in ownership, but there's there's value in, in, in employment and opportunities as well. Well, yeah, and I wanted to add on to that with the with the employment. I think I think it's it's cool sometimes, you know. Employment is cool sometimes, but I think I think that you know you got you got to have a plan. You know, it's all right. about having a, exactly. a, a bigger plan, a long play. So, for example, we just brought up you just brought up Kanye, Kanye Yeezy, Yeezus, Yeezus had a you know he had a Jesus. plan with Nike. You know, yeah, N- you know he had the he had the two Nike shoes that came out. He was an employee. Nike paid him a flat fee to you know use his name, use his likeness on the shoes, all the type of stuff. And to wear nothing but Nikes. Kanye was able to leverage it. He had a nice plan to where, like, okay, he built up his name to where anything he dropped, Hype Beast was going to hop all over it. So he just left Nike, went to Adidas, and then now he got he got full creative control at Adidas. And then he got a partnership at Adidas to where that took him to a billion. And then that led him over to Gap, to where he got the partnership with Gap, the Gap deal now. So and so and and now now he's trying to transition to actually having a board seat at the company that is because like the company of Adidas and the company of Gap he not involved with he just involved in his Yeezy section, but he trying to transition to over the whole company. If he gets a board seat at that company, then he he becomes an integral part of the whole company outside uh, of just the Yeezy section. Yes, yes, yes. So you know keep keep trying to expand out. But like I said, Kanye has a whole like bigger plan of what he's trying to do and you know and and, and Kanye understands the power he has so he's gonna swing his elbows. The, and, and 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 that's essentially what Joe is doing. Joe's swinging his elbows. He's speaking like he was still he wasn't even done with his Spotify uh 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 terms yet. He said like six more seven, shows. Yeah mm-hmm. seven episodes seven, left. Yeah, seven episodes seven episodes mm-hmm. left before what 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 with what, what, what the episode I saw he had six episodes left. He was right, like we got okay. six more episodes. He was like follow us. Not here. He and he's saying it on the on the show that's gonna be on Spotify. Don't follow us here. Don't follow us on Spotify. Follow us on YouTube. Yeah. So you know he he yeah. like he throwing he, that that's essentially what Kanye doing. Same deal. Throwing his balls because you when you know your worth you really know like my exactly. people gonna follow me. I got a crowd. I'm gonna go over here. F y'all little mm-hmm. fingers. Kick rocks with you know, kick rocks barefoot. Yeah, true that. And so that and that was leading, you know, the Kanye West the reason I brought him up was to push push us right into the next topic because Kanye West deals with this so much. And one of the things that Charlemagne the God what he did was he made a deal with a major stakeholder in iHeart. And so the question I was gonna ask both of you to really divulge your your thoughts and feelings on is who do you believe are the major stakeholders in the black in black economic prosperity. Hmm. Because there's stakeholders in every every move economically that we make. Joe Budden is his own stakeholder because he holds the keys. Right. But in Charlemagne's, you know, in Charlemagne's world or in his in Charlemagne's position, the stakeholder is iHeart. You know, they are the ones that are funding and fronting the money for him to do the deal he needs to do in order to to to, to get the network going. And I I think that, in my personal opinion, the stakeholders are ourselves. It's us. But I, I just don't think that we in mass have realized it. Yeah, I think that it's a, um, like I said, a similar situation with Charlemagne. Like, he just does not, to me, fully recognize his value. I think he recognizes he has some value, but not to the same extent, you know, to where to him it's just unfathomable to you know try to go out on his own and do that type of thing um and i think that um even with the employment question you all asked earlier it's a it's a value question you know do we see value within ourselves do we value ourselves enough to sometimes you know not take that check like dash said you know earlier um and the internet never lost you know some some of that food some of that money ain't good money that's right some of that food ain't good food and I think that's the one of the reasons why I really wanted to to bring that to the table too, was because Dame Dash, although people thought he was crazy, they say he's a, he's been saying this for years. He really has. He he went on the Breakfast Club, and there's an interview. You can go back and look at it. There's an interview oh, yeah. he did on the Breakfast Club where he said y'all could y'all could leave this place now and right. do this on your own. Mm-hmm. DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne Tha God, not one of them thought to themselves he's right. Let's leave one on one. Let's they, move and because let, if because they took the Breakfast Club, wouldn't spent their own money, bought the cameras, set up the set up the situation, and did it as a podcast 
or and, and use YouTube as the rails if they wanted to until they could build their own website. You don't think people would follow them? They yeah. they are powerful. Yeah, because they 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 got the, they got the same juice. So everybody they get, they can get on their own. And uh, I mean, but I think I think because I like the thing I love doing is reading the comments in all these videos, like Joe's uh, video. You read the comments, people talk about that, and people talk about like Envy. Envy got four kids. I mean, if you look at the Breakfast Club, they the only person that's even remotely cut from that cloth that oh, even remotely might even touch what Dame said is Charlemagne, and maybe you know as we see he doing what he doing, but Envy and and Ye. Hell no, nah. they they not doing envy and ye like okay we about to we about to stay employed we about to say whatever we don't care like we just trying to make this money we just trying to live comfortably we don't care nothing about the bigger picture per se we not really trying to like really set some black folks free we ain't we ain't on that but you know who's gonna be Harriet Tubman though you know like you got somebody gotta not be them niggas somebody <laughs> and, 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 and that's the thing somebody has to be it because if you think about it, let's just think about it from an economic standpoint. You know, what we're doing right now, we all purchased our gear. We have our podcast. I, I'm literally paying for the subscription services that we're using to make this podcast go. We're putting our own money up and we're not even famous. We're not right. even we're not even like the hugely widely known people at, at this point in time. We're going to get there. And that's that's me projecting out. We're going to get there. We're going to be that. But, for, but right now we're not. And I'm fa- it's fair to say that I'm putting my own money up. But can you imagine a world where a big boy radio, a breakfast club, um, I don't know who else is give me some, uh, uh, not Steve, is Steve Harvey still on? Steve Harvey, who all, if you had five of the major top black radio hosts get together and say, we're going to start our own radio network. That's power. Which is That's so crazy. Power. Which is crazy now that I think about it because people been us on this whole kick ever since uh, Colin Kaepernick started, you know, boycotting. People are like, oh, we're going to start our own NBA. We're going to start our own NFL, which that type of thing, you kind of almost have to do the employment because it's, it's so big and it's so hard to get into that game right. given where we are, you know, as a people. But it's something as simple as a podcast. A like radio? Right. How, right. Right. Inexpensive that is to do that stuff now, especially because we have the internet. It's way more dual and way more fathomable than, you you know something is like the nba or the nfl like that's huge that's and billions of dollars and that's the thing it's so crazy and it's and it, to me it just seems like the obvious answer is that we are our own stakeholders but maybe there's some stakeholders we just haven't identified who are not gonna who haven't helped us out yet and it seems to me that we're looking for some random pie in the sky person when we have somebody like a Steve Harvey with money. We got somebody like Charlamagne, the guy who got money. We got somebody like a Joe Budden who has money. And one of the most interesting things about our black economics today is that we actually have the ability to reposition ourselves. The question is, will we make the move to actually reposition ourselves? And it's something I haven't really said on this show, but as we get ready to start really promoting the, the TMF podcast, Too Many Feelings, one of the feelings that we have to remember, we had to address is that we're not in the same room together. It's COVID-19. Miss Monroe is in Atlanta. Freddie B is in Harlem. T Staples is all the way in Brooklyn. And we record this show. In the hood of Brooklyn, too. I'm in the butt crack of Brooklyn <laughs> where the shit come out. <laughs> okay? These are, these are facts. And I'm telling you, we're, we're located remotely doing the show together. And we're, and we're pushing this show out. So you can't tell me that you guys can't get it together. You don't even have to sit in the same room to do your show these days. Right. You, but I, 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 wanted, I wanted to talk about the NBA thing. Actually, the NBA, especially this year, could have got the wheels rolling with starting their own deal. They could have done it, especially with this COVID. This COVID interrupted the season. They could have they could have did their own thing. And, and, and actually, I sat and thought about it. The way the NBA could have, all these boys could have broke off and started their own league. Once everything stopped, they could have been like, okay, we not playing no more. And they could have used they could have used whatever COVID. We scared of COVID. We're not gonna do it no more. The top players, all the top players could have just started a league. Uh LeBron, A D, Giannis, Durant, Kyrie, all, all the superstars of the league, because they all black. They could decide, okay, we're gonna start a league, got together, we're gonna start a league. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna all uh, have equity stake in the league. So LeBron, you're gonna be the owner of a team. Durant, you're gonna be the owner of a team. All the top players. We're going to be owners of the team. You know, you take the number of players and you and you divvy it up like that. Like, okay, boom. You know, based off the maybe the MVP vote from the, from the NBA. 
okay, this is the MVP voting, so this is how we do it based off who owns what team. You had those teams, you had the top players initially just come, while all the lower mid, mid-grade players, they stay in the NBA, keep getting their money. Now, all the players that are in the NBA, you're going to have new superstars because the old superstars started to leave. So the NBA have to prop up new superstars. So once those new superstars are propped up by the NBA, then they make the transition to this new league. Once the juice is gone out of the NBA, then, okay, the players that come out of college, you just come straight into the new league. Boom. Right. The juice is gone. NBA the new is no ballers more. league. The new ballers league. The NBL. The new ballers league. <laughs> right. A black a black basketball association, BBA, something. I don't the know. Ne- but Negro but basketball it, it, league. And then, and then you have Lavar as the commissioner, and then boom, never lost. And then we 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 killing the game. And the ball never, never lost. Never, never, never. So 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 would you say the stakeholders for it to be in that situation are the players themselves? Yeah, the, the, but like the thing is, the thing is, is like you know, uh, Miss Monroe, she she alluded to it. Is when you own some people, these people that own stuff, they taking the risk, and there's risk involved. There's uncertainty. You got to step mm-hmm. out there. You can't be you got you can't be scared. A lot of people they scared to step out there because it's like, oh, I've been broke all my life, and then okay, now this person dropping a million in front of me, I'm about to have a million dollars. Like I'm about to finally like do all the stuff I wanted to do. But if you making a million, just like Joe said, you making a million, them boys making a billion probably off you. You, you oh, get you a million. That curve, you man. get a million. I get it, a million. <laughs> right, it's like on, on some Oprah stuff, but it's right. like it's like it's like uh, in the in the music business, people have all these terrible deals. You hear about it all the time. People deal is slow. Like, what kind of right. deal is that? Like a three sixty deal? How? Like, we've been hearing about this since the nineties. Niggas still out here signing bad deals. Like, like uh, Meg Thee Stallion was the most recent one we heard about. Why? Because these people broke, and people come like, okay, we're gonna throw all this money. You gonna be a rap star? Here's a chain. Here's a watch. That same thing. They try to do the show. Try to give him Rolex for his new deal. Right, no, no damn right, Rolex. Right, right. Ugly ass little boy. Like, give me that ownership. I I get my own Rolex. I buy my own chain. Let, let me get that ownership so I can flip it so I can I can be big time for 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 my life. <laughs> but 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 these companies they give you just a little bit so you can be big time for the next five years. But but a lot of people when you broke you so you so short sighted you can't see past the fog in front of your face. They put a little smoke fog in front of your face. You can't see through it. It's like the and horse. You know, it's horse with the blinders on. It's like I can't see left or right. I can only see forward. And the you money's can't looking, even see forward. You can't even see forward. You can see the, an inch in front of you. It's like Ed with the glasses on, like just just straight back. Nah, like Stevie like, Stevie Wonder glasses. Nah, nah, it's like it's like the it's like uh, uh, Looney Tunes. You know when the, when when the when the coyote chasing the road runner and the road runner blow the smoke up and he run, he run into the smoke and his head in the smoke and he can't see where he's running. He run right off the cliff, but when the smoke dissipates and he look, he like yep. oh snap, I'm uh, I'm in a ravine. He fall and splat. splat. That, that's what all, that's why these little broke rappers doing. All these little broke people, you know that's all. And then they just find the next one. Yeah, yeah, and and then they just take advantage of them, you know. It's rape, rape party. That's all. It's all you see is just economic like, rape like, party. Like, like Puff Daddy in the nineties, <laughs> <laughs> right? I, was he? I don't know. I love Puff. Puff. I know, love Puff revolt. too. I love Puff. I love Puff. He had some bad guy. deals. Like you know, bad. I, see, I know y'all seen no videos to my Puff is toxic. I know you seen the videos. I know you've seen him, Freddie B. Don't act like you ain't seen him. I, I believe I believe I might have heard of it. Yeah, I believe I might have heard of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Pander into the puff. Puff, come holler at Freddie B. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he rubbing you the right way. That's all I'm saying. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the internet never lost. <laughs> he, 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 he ain't rubbing me no way. That's the last thing he gonna do. That's the last thing you'll hear about Freddie B doing. For some money. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, you don't do nothing funny for the money, you know. I mean, but it, it's it's it, it almost makes me see, look at people like uh, uh, strippers and, and prostitutes. Like at least they have, at least they got control over their stuff. Hopefully, unless they got a pimp or something, who knows? Right. I you mean, know, even even they don't. The strip clubs, they they got to pay rent. They got to kick that money back to the owner. So it's you know that's rare. But are the strip clubs black owned? A, a, a lot of times they be like a lot of times they be they be Jewish owned or, or um, come on Fred or, 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 or Persian owned. Now I'm just saying like all the ones I know like a lot of ones I know I be surprised like a lot of these big ones that you find out about they be like it be a Jewish dude on it or 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 a Middle Eastern it be somebody you will never expect. So we that, we, we don't even have control of our economics in the strip club. Man, all these other all these other cultures they see like okay black culture run the world they just they just they uh, they. Like adapt, not adapt, but they gravitate to a particular 
area of our culture and they're like okay well look let me let me monetize this because like because the thing is a lot of black people we just having fun in our culture it's right just we don't even realize how to monetize our stuff because typically what happens is you create this art and then you hand it over to somebody else to help make it make money exactly. you know and that's been the, that's been the problem so when you don't understand that part you always end up getting screwed and so i've had to learn that myself you know i'm creating content okay then this content needs to have a purpose and it needs to basically be promoting something that i'm going to either sell or a service um a great example of this and i don't know if it's still up on netflix um netflix had a show called uh the toys that made us almost mm. every toy that you ever heard of that came out of the 80s and the 90s there was a show that was attached to it like you had teenage mutant ninja turtles you had um transformers right, you had uh right. he-man most of those cases except for uh teenage mutant ninja turtles all of those shows that were surrounded by those toys, really the toy came first, but they created the show to promote the toys. To support the sales, right. To support the sales, right. To basically, right. you know, promote it. So as, as somebody who's creative, I, when I saw that and I was like, oh man, I'm doing this all the way backwards. I'm creating based off the fact that, oh, this was just in my heart, which is not to say that you shouldn't, but you need to also think then too, okay, if I'm creating this thing, okay, what is it going to sell or promote? So that way I can benefit from that and I can live off my art. Right, right. That makes sense. Well, and that, that's and well, I guess real quick to speak to what you just said. Uh, I, when I did it, when I was on a reality show, I called uh, my home girl uh, Crystal. She was serious on um, Flavor of Love and Flavor of Love Charm School, and that's one thing she told me. She was like, "When you on the when you you know go and do the show, and um, but you know once you're done with the show, and once the show start airing, once it's airing, you you need to have the next thing ready to like mm-hmm. be you on the next thing. You're not you're not because like she what she was saying was what she learned was. People will be on these reality shows, and rea- when the reality show is airing, they be loving the life of being on a reality show. People mm-hmm. know them and doing these parties and doing all that, and they caught up in the moment. And then the show ends, and it's off the air. Then it's like, okay, what's next? And you hadn't planned for it, and now you like, okay. So it's, she's like, why you got the eyes on you? All the eyes on you. You need to be have something That's else right. other than the reality show. Like, what else happening? So when they come to see you, they see your shoes, your clothes, your hair, your this, your that. They see all the That's other right. stuff. Make sure you take advantage of all opportunities and any opportunities that we get to increase our black economic situation in America. We need to take advantage of it, whether it's ownership or or employment. Let's have a plan to take this thing to the next level. As y'all can see, man, we we, <laughs> we got so many feelings about this. Look, look, do this. Do us a favor. Send us a message. Our handles are in the descriptions. Let us know how you feel yeah. about black economics in America today. I'm your host, T. Staples. Here with Miss Monroe and your main man. It's your boy Freddie B, man. Holla at me on the IG. Yeah, and this has truly been a pleasure to have you guys listen to us right now on the TML Podcast. For we have too many feelings. Peace. Yeah.